Hi everyone, everybody please take a seat. Hope you all enjoyed the last session. It's a lot of ideas. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce Yuri Lavi. He's going to talk about Pixel. Thank you very much. Um, okay. My name is Yuri Lavi. I'm now Pixel General Manager. Thank you for the time. Um, I'm going to talk about the future of image tracking and the first time I was approached to talk about it, in fact, actually was very excited because this time I felt we would do something different. This time we'll talk about real numbers on the internet and see how the web behaves. So why we even can talk about that, um, I assume you saw Mark's presentation. For the last couple of years we have developed a platform called Pixel Platform or formerly named IRC. And this is basically a visual search engine. Uh, um, we receive an image on one end, even, even, if, uh, even if it's modified or altered, and we basically know how to search that, that image inside a large corpus of other images, and I'll locate the original uh, copy of the image. And we do that at scale. In that platform, we have about oh, more than 140 million assets from more than 200 contributors. And that platform nowadays operates uh, uh, in such a scale that it receives an image uh, less than, uh, in less than one minute to ingest into the platform. It also performs uh, uh, search operations with 5 billion searches a month. This is a big number, and this is a number that uh, basically allows us to talk about the future of the image tracker, to talk about how the web behaves, because we can analyze the images on the web, we can learn the behaviors, the patterns, and that's exactly what I want to share with you. So, we have uh, different products, but from the tracking perspective, uh, the products that basically drive the understanding in numbers and the behaviors are obviously the well-known pixel tracker that track, trackers and monitors uh, mostly unauthorized use, but we have other products as well that operate in scale and they gather information about, uh, uh, again, images being, uh, being used on the web. So why, uh, or what we can do with tracking, uh, uh, or we, we basically, obviously, can uh, protect the copyright, right, the, the IPs, but we also can reduce the operational cost and burden. We can understand, we can follow up how many images have been used in order to generate generate uh, billing information for, for, for our customers. We can do now pricing, we can understand exactly uh, what are the popular images are in order to build uh, to, to build the pricing correctly. And basically we can gain insights about how our images are being used. So let me start by uh, first introducing what is our work. Uh, our work on the, on the web is estimated to be of around 634 uh, million URLs. Uh, and, you know, it's actually not a big number. Uh, and this is excluding, excluding social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and etc. Out of that, 88 million Tumblr URLs and 59 million uh, WordPress URLs. Now, at every given time, we at Pexco know that a third of websites are not available. And this is the X, uh, the index, the red X that we see in our view. And basically, those sites are not being, uh, they are under construction, they have some issues, and some technological issues, uh, but that happens in every, in every second, basically. So we remove from that 200 and something million sites, and there is some magic going on here that we know that about 55% of the websites on the web uh, are basic commercial sites uh, that probably will be um, companies, small, small medium business uh, and we are not talking about uh, a blogger that really promotes uh, himself and, and tries to sell uh, something online. So doing that calculation and some of the tumblers and workers uh, uh, URLs are also commercial gives us around 179 million of commercial web. Okay, this is this is the universe, and that, that universe that use, uses your images, or buys your images, and promotes products and services um, with your content. What is interesting, though, that and that is quite shocking, that 58 percent of businesses still don't have a website. Okay, so what we have seen before 179 million URLs is basically for 32 percent. Okay. 
And that's why uh, uh, a few platforms like Wix uh, uh, and others uh, actually succeed because they provide platforms for people that frankly don't really know how to build the website, how to promote the website, how to apply SEO and things like that. Um, so it's good news for us. I mean, we definitely will see a growth in, in businesses that will continue to consume and build websites and consume our products. But it's most shocking to you actually that 98% of those uh, businesses that still don't have a website do have some sort of pres uh, uh, presence on, on, on social. And by social, obviously, I mean mostly Facebook which is quite intriguing and we as industry definitely should look into that and come, as, uh, come up with uh, different solutions how the social web uh, must monetize our content uh, via technological solutions and we definitely can talk about that at the end another, another shocking fact is that out of those sites that we have seen 179 millions that represent 30 something of commercial web 62 are still blank, they don't use images. Oh, they, they do, they use kind of iconic graphical images, very small. Okay, it's not our content, it's not high quality. This is quite shocking. So it means that we still have room to grow. And uh, obviously, if we know how to profile, and we know how to find all those that actually use our content, then we can grow in that room and then we can find those in uh, additional potential customers in the 60 something percent of the websites. So it's quite shocking. Now, uh, about the old uh, rule 80, uh, 80 20 or 20 80. Um, this is also something that we can see on the web very easily. And in order to uh, find the right correlation about that rule, we needed to understand how the websites behave, and, and the limit is somewhere at the 50 pages per site. So, 80% um, of the websites that do use uh, images have less than equals 50, pa 50 pages, and that's it. The other 20% uh, bigger, uh, bigger sites, some of them are editorial sites, um, like editorial news sports and entertainment, but this is really a small percentage inside those 20. What is interesting is that those 20% will actually use six times more images than the 80. Okay? So it's actually really in, 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 in reality, in um, uh, kind of um, numbers that were captured after years of chrome and monitoring the web, uh, we can easily see that the majority has less than 50 pages, still consume images, but the bigger sites will consume much more images and six times more. And that can help us obviously in, in pricing strategy for you because you obviously can leverage the all uh, uh, supply demand, right? Uh, the, the sites that have 20% or well, the sites of the 20% uh, that will use more uh, images basically could drive a bigger or a higher price per image. And then, uh, got, uh, and then we can go and utilize the tail of 80% of, of, of other sites which still have a very big presence by a lower price per page. The majority, though, and this is obviously we put a limit at 50 pages, the majority of images appear on the first 50 pages. And if you look at the, what happens on every site after 50 pages, we'll say the number of images per page actually decays very, very fast. And this is important because it allows us to kind of be visible. So if you sell your content, want to promote your content, others that consume your content are basically promoting your content as well. So if you are not on the first 50 pages, then okay, it's tough luck. So we need to be there, and in order to be there, uh, we also need to apply some other techniques. What are the techniques? Let me introduce that from a different angle. This is an average number of keywords on the web, okay? This is 20 top mosquitoes. This is crap, okay? It's like domain, hosting, web, web world. And the reason why is that uh, it is, uh, the majority of people that design websites will use um, auto-generated tools and will apply some other, um, some other things. And, and those keywords don't, don't mean anything, right? They do not drive uh, any engagement, they do not drive SEO, they are not SEO optimized. 
And if we think, and this is really also what people used to do, right? The owners of the websites find out quite hard to always optimize and find the right keywords on the web pages. So it actually brings us to a very old proof, maybe, and the picture was a thousand words. Because what we have, what we're supposed to have, and uh, the last panel uh, talked about that, we're supposed to have very great metadata. Or a great metadata and keywords that can augment uh, the websites. Now think about that, it's in my opinion totally new and fresh. But you can also augment not only visually the website, and basically write the content visually, but also by providing your metadata or by by basically selling the metadata of the websites to enhance the, uh, the SEO to provide them abilities to be found much easier on the web engines. And with Pixel, we do have a product called Pixel Metadata that definitely promotes uh, the usage of the Pixel platform, especially for the social media, in order to uh, help those social medias to consume the metadata. Great metadata, great source on the images. And this is totally what now, it's not, uh, it's not what's happening right now in reality. What we see in reality right now is that the average number of keywords which are SEO per page are three, which is nothing. There's about 38, 40 words per page, but there are nine, on average, nine images per page on the website. Now think about that, that if you combine the metadata on, 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 on an image, and you have nine images per page from the first 50 pages, that's something that volatile. Not well, what else we can know? So, an interesting thing here is that we know that if you sell a content and somebody buys it, it probably searches for one stop shop. Because the majority, or I'd say 42% of the images that are being consumed on the web are longer. If somebody buys the image, basically he goes to one single licensor or owner, buys the image, puts on the web, and that's it. Which is, which is great news, I guess. Yeah, especially if we have the room to grow and also to, uh, to, 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 to increase the number of potential commercial webs that would promote your imagery. 40% would be up to three licensors, three contributors. So that, that creates the majority. The majority of the sites will use one to three uh, owners to find the image and buy the image, and that's it. That's, that's a fascinating fact in my opinion. The websites themselves do tend to change over a year. It basically means that they refresh their content. We're talking about 22% of the websites that change their content over a year. It's a big number. It's interesting. It means that the customer base should be should be there because they actively search for new images and to basically enlarge and engage uh, with the audience that will visit their websites. And what is what most surprising is that we can build a tendency, we can find a tendency when a site will consume more images. What is interesting is that if we know that the site uh, refreshes about four percent of its uh, of, of its uh, images, then within two months. 32% will be refreshed as well. That's, a, that's a fascinating. It basically means that we have a hot map of sites that will demand new content, new visual content to be put on the web. Now to another uh, interesting fact. Um, Pixel obviously tracks and monitors unauthorized use for many years. What is fascinating to me is that that number continues to be very high. Across all our customers that report back, back about uh, authorized use and unauthorized use of images, 78% of me find this unauthorized use. This is unbelievable. This is uh, almost 2015. And if you had some talks with Pixel folks uh, over the past years, we were mentioning numbers like 80, 85, 90. So there is a drop, but it, it's, uh, it's a very minor one. 78% means that most of our customers report between 66 to 90 something percent of non legit use. This is money on the table, this is unbelievable. What else I can tell you is, uh, is what is the distribution of the license types uh, per website. So, uh, and actually, that blends nicely with unauthorized use because most of the products that we run on behalf of our customers, so that, that is changing right now, 
is for the array images. The number of array images on the web is only 2%. Rights managed images, only 2%. 30, uh, 57 are creative arrays. Okay? So we definitely see a decline in that and increase in the editorial images. So editorial images basically go up. And I assume that, that that's something that you all know, but uh, it's very nice to see that in numbers, in real numbers from the internet. So it basically means if we operate it in, uh, in, the, in the area of unauthorized views and track those images and monetize the unauthorized views, it potentially means we have a lot of what we do with our iPhone editorial. And if we can automate and build the right processes to automate the whole approach, unauthorized views approach with our iPhone editorial images, that basically means that we can monetize a huge part of the internet, which can, uh, consists out of 94% of images on the web. By automation, what I mean is that you as a licensor, you as a, as a content owner, if you find an unauthorized you really want to you know, be paid, right? You want your license fees, maybe some cost of pursuit, and you, really, you want to return back. And you know, potentially would like to find uh, be compensated for some damages. On the contrary, the, the, the people that use your content, sometimes they even don't know that they need obviously to pay for that, they don't want to, have to pay you any cost of pursuit, any damages at all. They might not want to pay any licenses, but they definitely want to use your content. And you want to allow them to use your content, but you want them to pay. So by automation, I mean that we need to have to find a place, a very new place that knows how to automate the whole idea of the approach to those potential people that use your content, sometimes without understanding, and give them the right tools to say, hey, I purchased that, if it's correct, for example, in or I purchased that, I want to opt out. That's fine, that's a valid license. Um, or maybe, okay, I have another, I have a license, could you check it for me? So if, if there is a place that uh, receives that data and automatically works and operates in that, then we can reach to many people and basically negotiate the right price that we can collect for, uh, from, from that and other skills. Let's talk about images and distortions. So one of the questions uh, uh, for, for the older panel was, what happens when somebody clicks on an image and downloads to the, to the hard drive? And this is really interesting because usually what happens in that activity, no license data is being preserved and the image changes, uh, there are some, um, some additional transformation and distortion that are being applied. So the interesting part is that 77% of the images on the web are being distorted, are being altered from their original source. And by alternation, I mean sometimes it's all it's it's, uh, it's um, it could be a different compression method. So in ice, it doesn't seem uh, to us to be different at all. But what is surprising is that about 14 percent are being heavily uh, distorted. And by heavily, I mean something like that. This is uh, on, uh, on the above. You see the original image, and below you have a modified image. It's a true example that without image recognition it's really, really hard to tell, but basically uh, this traffic light was uh, cropped and copied here there's many alternations that in, in, in colors and additional modifications of different uh, additional objects that were introduced so this is the heavy modification, we're talking about 14% of those appear on the web uh, about 41 are moderate. The moderate can mean something like that. Two objects being collaged, or uh, text being applied, uh, big crops, uh, and other alternations. So really without image recognition, it's really hard to find those instances on the web. The 22 uh, have minor changes, and the minor changes are slight crops, and maybe compressions and things like that. Let's talk about sizes of the images. Uh, the sizes of the images um, are also um, kind of, uh, well, well, to me it was interesting to know whether we are at that age of, uh, of internet providing big, uh, you know, big images to our customers. And it, it appears that not. If you look at, at that graph, most of the images are below 500 pixels and, and down. So basically, if you invest in selling and preparing uh, kind of big images, uh, things like that. That's not what's going on on the web. 
will not go uh, for now, it will not happen on the mobile. Uh, so it basically, it basically means uh, there is no conclusions uh, that we can derive out of the, um, the sizes of the images. So you can see that the majority falls between 200 to 300 pixels. Okay, so the web also constructed from flash objects and PDF files, and 37% um, of the websites are being uh, developed and being used with flash technologies. So if we really want to reach uh, to people that use those technologies, eh, we need to understand that, and we need to play, we need to provide the right content for them as well. Uh, if, if the website is not being um, and their website is not being constructed to build with Flash, they still will have on third, uh, on third of the websites a web page that will contain a Flash, uh, flash object. 43% of the website will contain PDF files. Okay? So, what is interesting to see about the web is that it's not only a regular HTML file that you need to invest, you need to build, you need to uh, buy a nice image. It's the, full, it's, the whole, it's the full package when you go and sell something, you need to think about that. The web contains flash files, and media files, and PDF files. You definitely need to think when you promote your images, how those will be used, because people will continue to use those, uh, the, that content in different medias as well. Okay, let's talk a little bit about video. What happens right now with video is uh, it's totally, uh, it's, it's totally beginning, but it's a, it's a, it's a big beginning. There is 182 million uh, unique viewers in US uh, only, which is almost like 60% of the US population in January 2018. It's a big number. So video basically goes up, and every consumption of video will be important in the future, especially in how we monetize our content in video as well. 4 billion hours a month, it's a number of, of hours that an average person or well, people spend watching YouTube videos. And we didn't do anything for that, I, I guess. If anybody did here, this was wrong, it will be interesting. Because most of the revenues are going to the platforms that utilize video and basically have ads on top of our content. Okay, and this, these are big numbers. And a video is not only a footage that you create, it's also skills uh, that, that are being embedded uh, within, uh, within, uh, within the video. So, as soon as you know about Content ID, right? Content ID is a Google's uh, system that knows how to find uh, or search videos within videos. And what they do instead of uh, the kind of monetizing that author is using the way that they promote ads and we all need to uh, uh, watch those ads at the beginning of every YouTube video now. So, um, what is interesting and intriguing is that those systems do not track skills images within the video. That's a, that's a fascinating. This is a real example of a YouTube movie that was uh, called in Ars Perfecta. We extracted the images and we uh, basically search them uh, using Pixel platform. So um, this is this is content that four billion hours of that content is not being monetized nowadays at all. So definitely, this is one of the uh, places that we all as an industry should look at and uh, monetizing those usages, including the stills images within the video, is in my opinion uh, very important. What is more interesting is the editorial side of the video is rising. So, uh, 2.5 million uh, hours uh, is the number of news related videos on YouTube. Okay? It's interesting because that for us means something. It means that somebody will search for, for the right content. And we know that editorial content, content is rising up. We saw that on the previous slides. So, it basically means that we definitely should have very good metadata and tagging. It tags our images and allows to those edit editors and, the, and, and those editorial um, uh, videos to capture and find the right images if they still want to embed still images within the video. Okay, so this is definitely something uh, something that 
should be in place and the speed of the execution is, is going up. So find those images and getting them very fast will create uh, a constant consumption of those editorial uh, videos that will continue to grow. And tracking and monitoring is obviously, uh, you know, we, we, we talk here about the future of tracking and monitoring. Tracking and monitoring of videos is definitely uh, something that we all uh, should think about because uh, that's, that, that, that's content right now is not being monetized at all. Okay, so some conclusions that I can tell you about um, the future of image, track, uh, image tracking is like that. We know that 58% still don't have any website. So it's a growth that will happen. There are many sites that still lack, they don't use our imagery, so we should find those and we should sell them. If we do a good job, then we will be something like 40% of single distance or selling to that website. This is really not that interesting. What is more interesting is that unauthorized use still continues to be a big number. This is actually shocking in my opinion. We're talking about almost 80%. So monetizing unauthorized use is something that uh, if you automate correctly and operate correctly, that environment basically can give us lots of money or uh, allow us to take lots of money off the table. The video growing up fastly, the editorial video is growing up as well. The editorial uh, video means that somebody wants to consume either your images or either your footage or, uh, that is related to a specific event. So it's really important to tag your images. Uh, be able to provide the right content that all those automated systems that generate the video will know how to bring in the content very fast and then obviously track that content is very important since again nobody monetized that right now. So I basically finished I did my homework and did it actually faster. Uh, so any questions? Okay, thank you very much.